space is kind of the defining characteristic of living with what's called cerebral palsy, which is very complicated and I only have 10 minutes. So basically what you need to know is my legs don't work. It's cool though, I get convenient parking. <laughs> A lot of the idea is centered around the ideas of accessibility and people tend to focus on, well, there's a ramp. But there's a much further bit of accessibility that isn't talked about, which is the accessibility of your heart, the accessibility of, of your mind to think beyond your own borders. It kind of transcends disability, but disability is, is more of a socioeconomic thing. I think I learned the most about this through awkwardness. There is just about nothing more awkward than middle school. <laughs> Unless you have cerebral palsy. <laughs> So what you try to do is you try to find space. You try to find some sort of way to fit in, but then you never really fit in because, hell, there's stairs. <laughs> or sometimes, and this is the point of this story, sometimes the bathroom is just a little too far. <laughs> so how I began to find space outside of the guy who sat down a lot and never got asked to any sort of anything. I even asked for a date to the dare dance and that got, well that just turned into tears for the girl and then later for me. But I found this thing called punk rock. But I couldn't really do it all that well because I was being raised by a single mother on a waitress's wage who also happened to work for Chrysler and also happened to deliver pizzas. So I was one of those latchkey kids, but I so wanted to be punk rock. So I found a way, it's called gutter punk. Dirty, crusty gutter punk. And I knew that well, because basically what you have to do is just not shower. <laughs> so I can do that so well. So to cap this all off, one time hunting with my friend Jacoby in the Salvation Army, I found a Black Flag My War t-shirt. Boom! Henry Rollins. Instant points. Now, what I really wanted to do, because, you know, I didn't really know a whole lot about punk rock, but I watched enough, like, VH1 documentaries to kind of get an idea, is Sid Vicious was really cool, and he had leather pants. Well, my mom didn't really care about me being cool. So we often shopped at this place called the J.C. Penney Outlet Store. <laughs> and it's pretty, like, all of the clothes are irregular, and my body is already kind of irregular, so it kind of fit. <laughs> so I found leather pants, sort of. They were like pleather pants, but it really worked with the black flag shirt. And then I just didn't shower for three months at a time. And I would just crust my hair with like dollar store general LA looks hair gel and just make it work. And God help you if you ever smelled me because my own smell would make me gag. Well, also, I found this wonderful thing called drugs during that time. And wow! So I was like, hanging out, playing PlayStation, trying to beat Final Fantasy VII for God knows how many times. I was like, ugh! And then all of a sudden I realized that it's daytime and I have to go to school. So I go to school and I'm sitting in English class and then all of a sudden I just start sweating. And my stomach feels like some sort of world war is happening or 
I don't know, it just feels the way that my heart feels after a girl rejects me. There's just something going on bad there. And I raise my hand and I'm like, Mrs. Brizones, can I go to the bathroom? And she says, no, you always go to the bathroom. <laughs> Which she's right. So what I end up doing is just hold it, just hold it. All of a sudden, like, the world war is just breaking out into absolute genocide of my insides. <laughs> just sweating badly, and I already smell bad, so it's getting worse. <laughs> Finally, the bell rings. Now, here's the deal, is, is that in the, the, the able-bodied bathrooms in my school, they're all, like, conveniently located at, like, ends of the hallway. It's so safe. But I have to use the special bathroom, and in the main office, which is all the way in the center of the school. And also, I'm kind of pudgy and just out of shape, and I don't like to go fast at all. So, but like, I'm just like trying to channel Forrest Gump or just somebody fast. Because I just feel it. I, like, I, I just feel that, that, that like the invaders inside my stomach are going to break through, and there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, I get in there and I'm all sweating. I get in the bathroom and I'm wearing a seatbelt. Now, seatbelt, there's pressure. So what happens when I start unstrapping and then I hit that seatbelt button and it releases a little bit of pressure? Well, guess what happened? Some of the scout team from the war going on inside decided to slip out. So like I diarrhea like a little bit. But I was like, all right, all right, all right. This has happened before. I can make this work. <laughs> but then I go to stand up. That releases my stomach muscles. Then all of a sudden, world war breaks out in my pleather pants. And it's like a good, I don't know, two, three minutes straight war. There was many casualties. <laughs> and so I proceed to go strap myself back in and I don't even ask the secretary if I can use the phone. I call my mom who's like so sleep deprived. I call her and I'm like, hey mom, come pick me up. And she's like, no, why? I'm like, just come pick me up. She's like, I'm not gonna do it unless you tell me why. And I'm like, I cramped my pants. <laughs> what? I cramped my pants. You need to tell me what's going on. I shit my pants! In the middle of the office, everyone stops. And then I realize just what I've done. She's like, all right, I'll come pick you up. So then I'm sitting next to all the cool kids that are in trouble with just like a fountain of just unholy diarrhea. Try to act cool with my black flag shirt. So then my mom picks me up. And my mom looks exactly how you would think she looks in not sleeping and working three jobs. So she is like some sort of samurai, top knot. She has all these things going on. And then I just start crying. Finally, we get home and like my mom just like trying to help me undress, which is abnormal for her because she's usually like working. And she's like taking off the leather pants and I'm like crying. All of a sudden, she just like starts dry even gagging. She's bent over me and she throws up on my head. That's when I decided to call on the white flag. I'm just like, just, just leave me alone. I take off the fake leather pants and I look like a olive skinned Greek man from the waist down. I had to take three baths. After the baths, I look at my pleather pants and realize that I can't go back there. I have to say goodbye to this punk rock. Well, what do I do? What do I do? Well, there's only one thing to do. I just got up and I wore khakis the next day. <laughs>